I do start the video in yet again another rural small town Walmart parking lot. I mean, you know. After a long drive to get here, I felt the need to fit into the redneck stereotype and go buy a six pack of Mountain Dew from the good old local Walmart. Just kidding. That, that was a bad joke. I actually don't drink soda or pop or whatever you want to call it. You can have the soda and pop debate in the comment section below. Nonetheless, if you're unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time. You can always keep up with the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. If I go too fast for you, or if you think that I'm going too slow, you can always adjust the playback speed by selecting the gear icon if you're watching on PC, or by selecting the three dotted menu if you're watching on a mobile device. Isn't YouTube great? Also really quick, as if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on my channel. Videos on other places like Rantoul can be found in my Illinois playlist or on my USA Small Towns playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow my other social media accounts accounts, and those links are below. As you're going to see throughout this video, specifically right here, you're going to see an abundance of soybean and cornfields that surround the small town of Rantoul, Illinois. This town is just like many other rural Midwestern cities and towns where agriculture is the identity. Most people identify these rural parts of the Midwest by just saying cornfields. But it's not just cornfields. Come on now. It's also soybean fields and, uh, that's, that's about it, so actually I guess it is mainly just cornfields. Anyway, agriculture within the state of Illinois in the year 2019 brought in over $16 billion, billion with a B. That was good for sixth place in the U.S. after Minnesota, Texas, Nebraska, Iowa, and California. But if you're not a farmer in some of these small rural communities, including Rantoul, you might have a hard time finding a good job within a profitable trade, industry, or company. There's not much here outside of agriculture. The first part of Rantoul that we cruise around in is the nicer part of town with newer homes and a suburban-like feel. There's a small handful of folks that live here that commute to jobs in the bigger towns nearby in Champaign and Urbana, while I-57 creates an easy commute. Some people really dig the small cornfield town vibes that places like Rantoul bring. It's also incredibly cheap here, as the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $86,000, compared to the national median of $210,000. So if you like the small cornfield town vibe, and you've landed a job in Champaign or Urbana, I suppose you can get quite a big bang for your buck if you choose to buy a home in Rantoul. Now that we have crossed over onto the other side of the railroad tracks and into the original grid streets that make up Rantoul, you'll start to see older houses and businesses. Today, Rantoul is home to 12,900 people, which is down from a 1970 peak population of 25,000 in 1970. That's about half of the town's peak population that is left. There is one big reason why so many people have left Rantoul, and we'll get into that later in the video. The good thing for the town today is that it's located in Champaign County, which means that it's close to Champaign and Urbana. Champaign County is one of only five Illinois counties since 2010 that has grown in population outside of the greater Chicago area. Oftentimes, if communities have struggled economically, being located in close proximity to other flourishing areas can help a community rebound, so Rantoul does have that to lean on at least. Other city stats on Rantoul include a median household income of $41,000 per year, 20% of the residents live in poverty, or 1 out of every 5, 19% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, Niche.com ranks the public schools as a C+, so those could be better, Niche.com is pretty accurate in their public school rankings. The crime rates here are nothing to worry about, as the violent crime rate is below average, and the property crime rate is just a little bit above average.
Back in the day, Rantoul started as a railroad town. The town's name comes from Robert Rantoul, who was the director of the Illinois Central Railroad in the 1850s. In 1917, the U.S. Army decided to build Chanute Field on the south part of town. The decision was made because at the time, Rantoul had good access to the railroads and was located just north of the University of Illinois, which could provide a decent amount of Army recruits. After World War II, Chanute Field was renamed Chanute Air Force Base, the town grew as the Air Force grew, as many airmen across the country were stationed there. The Air Force Base operated until closure in 1993, and right before then is when Rantoul started to rapidly decline. Since the Air Force Base was the Rantoul economy, the closure has had a large negative effect on the town. In 1970, the town hit a peak population of 25,000. In the 1980 census count, Rantoul lost 21% of its population, or 5,000 people, as the population was then 20,000. In 1990, the population was 17,000, and today, the town's population is down to 12,400. Today, there's a couple of warehouses and other industries in Rantoul, but most of the economy in Champaign County is centered around agriculture and the cities of Champaign and Urbana, or as some locals call it, Champana. It's going to be tough for Rantoul to make a comeback, mostly because it's located within the state of Illinois. Illinois has the second highest property taxes in the country after New Jersey, and unlike New Jersey, Illinois is surrounded by states that allow you to keep much more of your money. I mean, Indiana is only a 30 minute drive east. The high taxes in Illinois is largely believed by many to be the main reason why the state has lost more people than any other state since 2010. Companies that are looking to expand in the Midwest might choose other nearby cities in Indiana, such as Crawfordsville or Terre Haute, before they look at places like Rantoul, mostly because of the expenses of operating within the state of Illinois. Now we're getting closer to the decommissioned Chanute Air Force Base. The whole south part of town seems to be full of vacant lots and empty buildings, with only a few buildings in this part of town remaining occupied.
This part of town appears to be full of low-end apartment complexes. At this point, I make the transition from my original Rantoul video to the newer footage that I was able to capture a year later of the abandoned Air Force Base. Because, let's be honest, this footage is garbage. Dramatic music? Drone footage? Cloudy day? Yeah, that's more like it. Alright, so in case you skipped the video to this part, earlier I mentioned how Chanute Air Force Base was built in 1917. If you're like my now father-in-law who was confused when I told him that this place was built in 1917, and you're thinking, how could Chanute Air Force Base be built in 1917 when the United States Air Force wasn't established until 1947? Which is a valid question and it made me speechless during the conversation as, despite popular belief, I don't always retain all the information that I research for each video that I produce, and I would be a disaster on history topics if I were to be on Jeopardy. The only topics that I would succeed in would be sports and awful Adam Sandler movies. Getting back on topic, I did look it up afterwards and it was originally called Chanute Field. It was built by the US to help increase its air strength as it took part in World War I, so it's always been of use for military strength in the US. World War I took place from 1914 to 1918, hence the establishment of Chanute Field in 1917. The University of Illinois, which is not that far south of here, was one of only eight schools in the country at the time to offer pre-flight ground school training, which helped bring in recruits to Chanute Field. Since the United States Air Force was not yet established, Chanute Field was actually one of 32 different air service training camps that were built to help the United States battle in World War I. In 1909, the United States Army began training flight personnel. and in 1947, the United States Air Force was established. Back to Chanute Field, the name was officially changed to Chanute Air Force Base in 1948. The base went on to provide training for many who served in the United States Air Force. In 1950, during the North Korean invasion of South Korea, the Air Force Base saw nearly 12,000 students after seeing around 5,300 before. Chanute also helped train thousands of Allied airmen from Asia and the Middle East. During the 1970s, Chanute trained thousands of airmen that fought in Vietnam. As I start driving around and exploring what I can, the first building on the right appears to be an abandoned dormitory. The second building appears to be a senior living facility that's currently in use, even though this parking lot is not in use. I was surprised that the parking lot wasn't blocked off.
So this first building that you see here is an active senior living center. And the second building is an abandoned dormitory. There are a dozen or so of these abandoned airfields across the country that were built during the same time that Chanute was. It was in 1988 when the Department of Defense recommended the closure of Chanute Air Force Base, and on September 30th, 1993, the Air Force Base was officially closed. At the time of the closure, it was the third oldest active base that was a part of the USAF. The closure of the Air Force Base has had a dramatic effect on the economy of Rantoul, although the county is okay as she Champaign County is also home to the larger cities to the south of Champaign and Urbana. The University of Illinois is also there, and it's one of only seven counties outside of Greater Chicago to have gained population over the last 10 years. In case you didn't know, the state of Illinois is one of only three to have lost population since 2010, the others being Mississippi and West Virginia, but Champaign County is an outlier compared to the rest of Illinois, despite what you're seeing here in Rantoul. Throughout this section of town, you'll see buildings and facilities here and there as Rantoul tries to redevelop things. There's things like dental offices and other health facilities, and there's even some city functions such as the public library, a fitness center, and a water park. There are a few other facilities such as a child care center that I remember seeing along with a couple of churches. Many of the old buildings that were a part of Chanute, however, still stand abandoned and give the place an eerie feel. You can see here that at least something used to occupy this lot with the way that the sidewalk is laid out. Amazingly, this whole section of town has mowed grass, even though some of the parking lots and streets have grass growing as tall as seemingly three feet. Here you can see what appears to be a group of low-income apartments, quite a few of them as well. One thing that isn't talked about much by media outlets on abandoned Air Force bases or any Air Force base that has been around for a while is groundwater contamination, although there are a few stories out on Chanute Air Force Base, but not too many. During the trainings that took place at Chanute, there was a lot of firefighting foam that was used and left to do nothing but sit on the ground after being used, which then was absorbed by the ground. Firefighting foam contains a chemical that is known to help cause cancer in humans, which is called 
PFAAs, or most of the time just referred to as PFAS. The Air Force today is actually a super fun sight because of it. Chanute definitely isn't the only place in the U.S. that is contaminated with PFAS, as we continue to learn about new contamination sites every day. My state of Michigan is full of known PFAS sites, and if you ever click on a map and see where they are, you'll see that Michigan is full of them while other states have very few. That's mostly because the state of Michigan has been very proactive on the matter as it tries to avoid another Flint water crisis from happening, which most of us know about. If all other states had put the same time and energy that Michigan has into discovering these PFAS contaminated sites, then every state in this country except for maybe a few out west would look like Michigan does, including you, Illinois. Anyway, the contaminated grounds here are more so where the airfield is, and we'll get to that area shortly. And here it appears that we have even more abandoned dormitories. On the right here is what appears to be a nice brand new building. It is rather odd, though, to see the occasional nice new building amongst the vacant land and the other abandoned larger buildings. However, I guess it is nice to see some development, and hopefully over time, this whole area of Rantoul can be developed. This is what is known as the Minutemen Missile. It's a Cold War relic that was originally owned and maintained by the U.S. Air Force, but since 2020, it's been maintained by Rantoul, and the city has had to put up a fight to keep it here, actually, as the Air Force wanted to move it. The missile has sat at this spot since 1966, and it appears that it will continue to do so. Down here you really just have several large vacant fields, a couple of them have been converted into athletic fields, and you'll see a water park up ahead. This building here to the right was the Chanute Transition Center. Back while the center was operating, it was a place where juveniles would transition from being locked up to going back into society. The center was placed in a building that originally was used as a dormitory.
Looks like on the left you have a haunted house, and on the right you have a hotel called Quarters Inn. And not sure what this driveway leads to, what this massive building is behind these trees, but it is a big building and there's two entrances that you can take, this one that's blocked off and one ahead that is also blocked off, so I guess we're not gonna know. To the left here is an interesting old house that kind of seems out of place, but neat nonetheless. Straight ahead, the building that you see here is the old command center. Based off of research, I believe that this is where the Air Corps National Training Command was headquartered in 1941, before the United States Air Force was organized in 1947. And the building also goes by the name of the Headquarters Building. Also based on research, it appears that the community is trying to save many of these old buildings that were a part of the main campus of the Air Force Base, however it's hard to imagine the building here to the right being saved.
To the right is Grissom Hall, and there used to be a museum inside which was the largest aviation museum in Illinois. It became a function in 1994, but it disappeared in 2015, and since then, the large Grissom Hall has been unused and abandoned. And this whole area is where the airfield was back here. You can see the massive hangars that surround this large paved lot. This whole area I feel like is better seen from the drone footage, but here is the view from the ground. It's hard to believe that what I'm turning on here is an actual named street.
Well, from here, I transition from the footage that I got recently in September of this year back to the footage that I got back in the summer of 2020 as we see the rest of Rantoul because we haven't yet been to downtown or to the high school. One thing that I thought was neat about downtown Rantoul was this old Art Deco movie theater on the left called Home Theater. It looks like it was built in the 1930s and closed in the 1970s. From what I've read, it looks like the town is trying to pressure the owner of the building into remodeling it to make it look more attractive or to possibly even have it be reopened. Last but not least, this is Rantoul Township High School, home of the Eagles. Among the most well-known people from Rantoul is national news reporter Michelle Franzen, who most notably has been a correspondent for NBC News from 2001 to 2013. Greg McMahon is from here, who currently is the special teams coordinator for LSU's football team, but was the same position for the New Orleans Saints from 2008 to 2016. Also, Alan Richson is from here, who is mostly known for having a role in the frat boy TV show called Blue Mountain State. In this video, you saw the village of Rantoul, Illinois. You saw how it was a town that relied heavily on the Air Force Base when it was still in use. You saw with the population stats that I provided that Rantoul is a community that has lost half of its peak population, mostly because of the Air Force Base being decommissioned. There's hope for Rantoul though, and once again I say this mostly because it's only a 15 minute drive north along the interstate from the larger cities of Champaign and Urbana. Champaign County is one of only seven Illinois counties to have not seen a population loss over the last 10 years, which can be contributed to the presence of the University of Illinois. I do end the video here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, 
comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Illinois playlist or in my USA Small Towns playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace.